votes tonight. And we are still covering uh, the elections, the municipal elections that are taking place October 22nd. Is the day you can go out and vote. Um, and today I have a guest with me, Sean Rizvi, um, running for school trustee, Ward uh, 2. Uh, Sean, welcome to Hard Market TV. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, awesome, awesome. So, Sean, I, I have not seen you politically mm -hmm. uh, in other platforms and whatnot. I, I just want to know what inspired you to run for a school trustee in particular. That's a great question. So there's there's multiple different reasons. I actually grew up in the, uh, close to the Tobacco Center. So I went to Richard Collegiate. I've been in Tobacco my whole entire life. And after high school, I went to York University. Um, I was very fortunate to uh, become successful with a good career. And one thing that was important to me is to come back and to give to, to youth. So I created a mentorship program where I essentially help youth make decisions after school to go to college, apprenticeships, universities, entrepreneurships, and really help them make effective decisions and choices. Um, and I found that a lot of these students were very bright, but the problem was is that there were certain pieces missing. And you know, our public school system does a great job, but more can be done. And, and there is gaps when you meet uh, and you meet with a lot of these students who are struggling at first. Yeah. So working with them for a few years, I, I got uh, inspired. I realized, you know, how do I fix the root cause? You know, I keep mentoring students my whole entire life, but mm -hmm. how do I fix the root cause? And yeah. that's about addressing it in the education system, helping helping to tweak it that much more better. Um, mm -hmm. And I was fortunate to have an experience where I, I traveled around the world. I actually went to Africa. I was in Tanzania, yeah, I and I went to an orphanage. And mm. I taught math and English there. And you know, when you're when you're ta teaching orphans. Um, you start to really understand the value of education. And yes. you know what's super uh, 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 humbling is that when you start to understand that education can really help young folks yeah. get out of poverty, get out of issues like that. Absolutely. So going around the world and helping a lot of folks, I realized, mm -hmm. you know, I need to bring that love and respect for education back and help my own community, help yeah. my own uh, uh, neighborhoods of Tobacco Center. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's amazing, Sean. Also, you sat on the board of the Legal Aid. Yes. And uh, have you seen cases where youth, uh, like, that started from the school system, how uh, their experience was horrible in the school system, to end up in, in the criminal uh, system? So, um, I would say, uh, I had a great experience at the South Tobacco South Legal Aid Connect. When you're on the board specifically, your mm -hmm. job is to pass policy, and I think that's one thing that's important about the school board is a lot of trustees don't know what actual uh, a trustee is supposed to do, you know, and mm -hmm. your, your job is to pass policies. Yeah. Um, but through that experience and other volunteer experiences, um, and in particular, I used to volunteer around community centers, mm -hmm. and I worked at, uh, at risk youth as a leadership uh, coordinator or program. Um, and that's where I met a lot of youth uh, who have actually gone through those same issues, and I had to help help, help a lot of them. Um, and they go through the system, and you know, some of these kids I grew up with, you know, mm. they're the same age as me. Yeah. Um, and you realize one thing very quickly that uh, you know they were very smart, very bright, mm -hmm. but just one or two bad decisions or choices that you know that, that could have changed, that could have changed your entire out outlook on yeah. life. And I've seen that way too much. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll give you one example. You know, a student goes to school, and he struggles in math. He struggles in math, he loses confidence in English and science, he, he, he loses confidence in himself. And then something else comes along that says, hey, I'll, I'll replace your confidence yeah. uh, in ed education with, you know, violence or, or you know, this, this uh, you know, come to, to my club or come to, uh, you know, my, my sort of gang. Um, when that happens, it, how do you say no? You know, mm -hmm. one part of life is really tough, math yeah. homework, I'm, doing, I'm not doing well. Another part of my life, I'm, I'm a social gang. And that's where you see things starting to turn. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I'm glad you brought up like the age because you're closer in age and you remember your high school more than yeah, somebody who's a lot older than you. Yeah. So do you think that brings up like uh, that you can connect with youth and students a lot closer because you can relate to them? Uh, you can understand their struggles. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, I myself, I'm 27 and I'm, I'm very close to the school system. I graduated mm -hmm. from university not, not too long ago, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I 100% see the issues. And actually, that's one of my, uh, you know, one of my pleas to, to, to a lot of the voters is that, mm -hmm. you know, I understand what a lot of the youth are going, what's going on, not only because of my own age, but also because I'm there, I'm speaking to yeah. students. And you grew up in Etobicoke. I grew up in Etobicoke. You went to the schools in Etobicoke. Exactly. So. And, you know, and, and I grew up, you know, uh, it was a struggle, right? Mm -hmm. So so I knew how it was. Um, and I can relate to that directly. And a lot of people, uh, they don't understand when they when they haven't seen the streets themselves yeah. how, what it actually means, right? Absolutely. So it, yeah. it's just a matter. And uh, you know, uh, uh, there's other candidates, not just myself, who are the same age, right? There's one, mm -hmm. uh, one candidate running in Ward One, Zachary. Uh, yes. Yeah, he's yeah. also very Zachary. similar in age as well. So mm -hmm. when I see younger candidates like myself, or, or I, I, it's something that we need to embrace and we need mm -hmm. to support. Absolutely, absolutely. Sean, um, if elected, yeah. 
what are the main issues that you would like to focus on? Okay. Well, there's tons, uh, and I'm at priorities on www.votebrisby.ca, mm -hmm. um, but uh, there's actually uh, three that I'll bring up today. One is special education. Um, you know, one thing that's very important is that there's schools that unfortunately don't have the resources to support students. So when you go to a school and you have certain special education needs, anything from ADD to physical impairment, mm -hmm. sometimes schools have to turn students away. And imagine as a parent, you know, you're already going through so much and yeah. having to find out that now I can't go to a school that's nearby me. And stay staying on that theme, transportation. Yes. Um, you know, Etobicoke to me is very very close to my heart. Etobicoke Center is important to me, but also Etobicoke itself. So we have a lot of parents who are, are commuting across schools uh, mm -hmm. in the school board. I was going to French Immersion, and I had to stop going to French Immersion in grade two because they canceled the school bus. Mm -hmm. And every year, because of budget cuts, um, we have parents have to worry about is my grade four, five, six going to have a school bus next year? Yeah. We need to fix that. So Absolutely. I want to ensure there's more effective transportation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to ensure, thirdly, that our schools are repaired. Mm -hmm. It's actually, uh, it's pretty scary that there's schools uh, that have leaks when and the rain drops going, and mold. Yeah. And you know, and, um, mm -hmm. and to be honest with you, like I went to Africa, we built a school there, and it was you know, better than some of the schools that we have here. Um. But, to, but to say that, to, but to say it fairly, like, mm -hmm. you know, we do have a great infrastructure. We just need to prioritize that funding into certain schools. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's a couple of schools in Tobuk Center that need to be, it's more cost efficient to rebuild them than, than to repair them. Than to repair it. Yeah. Every little, oh, put band-aid solutions. Exactly. Where you keep putting the bandage, it's gonna come off eventually. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's another one. Another mm -hmm. one is, uh, you know, French Immersion School itself, bringing that back, is I want to build another French Immersion School in Tobuk Center. It's important mm -hmm. to me. I want to repair our schools. I want to that there's more bus options, not less bus options, and school buses for young kids. Because you know, telling kids to bus 10 kilometers in mm -hmm. Tobago Center is not necessarily uh, the, the, the fairest the thing to do. Fair, right? yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, especially with winter coming up right now. And yeah, you can yeah, imagine, right? Yeah. And, and, and in Etobicoke, uh, you know, we're not like a downtown part of the city. You have mm -hmm. to bus like zigzag, so it's like three or four buses just yeah. to get to somewhere that's nearby. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Um, Sean, also, I, I want you. Um, to talk about like the current issues within the TDSB, the school system. It became yeah. very politically involved. The parents have to be involved. Sometimes the parent wants to be involved, but they don't know how or the means. Yeah. Um, talk about the importance of parent involvement in, in a child's education. Uh, that's an absolutely great question. You know, there's a, there's a, a lot of issues that are around that specific piece. Um, so the first piece is a parent's involvement in child's education. I think we need to we need to embrace that as a school board. Um, and I know that there's been a lot of concern around how parents should be involved, but mm -hmm. I strongly believe that parents are the number one uh, educators in a child's life, and we need to support that. That means after school programs, uh, teaching them math, science, and English. But here's a reality. Mm -hmm. Parents work really hard, especially yes. in our community, right? They work really hard. And sometimes both parents have to work. They're working 12-hour shifts, um, and there's no time. Uh, and even after all that, they don't have enough money to pay for uh, tutoring. The, tutoring yeah, yeah, eh? yeah. So then you have these this class differentiation where you have some families who are able to afford after school program and some and some students who aren't. Mm -hmm. um, we need to, and, and we can't blame the parents for that, yeah. but we need to be able to facilitate that. I know in a Topoco Center, we have, uh, we're, we're really gifted with some great schools. Um, and you know, there's some very affluent areas, but there's also a lot of students who come from non-affluent areas. Mm -hmm. um, but they're put in the same bucket, so don't, they don't get the same resources like additional math tutoring. Yeah. So that's one thing that I want to fix. I know a lot of students who are coming from a Topoco North, mm -hmm. who are coming to the Tobacco Center schools. Um, and you know, a lot of students in, in, in Tobacco Center can afford tutoring. But what about these additional students who don't have that same uh, level of, of support? How do we ensure that there's a fair education? Or access to resources. Exactly. Because some, some parents um, do need a lot of help. Exactly. Some kids come from a single parent home. Yeah. Uh, it's hard I myself to come a single parent home, right? So. Yeah, and now look at you. You yeah. went to university and all that. Yeah, so right? that's amazing. <laughs> you know, um, uh, Sean, I want you to tell our viewers. Yes. Uh, people that are watching us, uh, yeah. why should people of Etobicoke Center at Etobicoke vote for you? Yeah. Well, that's a great question. Well, first of all, all of yours, Aslamu Alaikum, I just want you to understand three things that are very important. One, you have to go and vote. Whether it's for me or not for me, it's, it, it's you have to go and vote. You know, mm -hmm. if we want to make a stand here, if we want to make a difference, if we don't vote, we're literally giving up our right, and that's yeah. not something that we can't do. Second, when you invest in education, when you care about education, not just your own children, but you care about all children around you, 
everything is better around you. Society is better around you. There's less crime. There's better house values. But more important, you have a better future for everyone. And third, the reason why you can vote for me is because I've been through the system. I've struggled with you. I understand everything that you're going through. I have my successes. When I work on Bay Street, I know what efficiency means. I know what success means. But I've also known the streets itself. And I understand the struggles that parents go through. I know how it is to live under a single mom. I know how it is to be from a marginalized community and be treated differently. I know what it takes, I know how it feels, and I can represent your children and your needs better than anyone else. And I'll communicate to you effectively if you give me the chance. That's amazing. Thank, Thank you, you so much for Thank coming you. on Harmony no, TV. No, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. So our viewers, uh, that was an interview with uh, uh, Sean uh, Rizvi. Um, go out there and vote. He said the message very loud and clear. And we want to we want to give you a platform and a place to look at your candidates. Um, ask some questions so you can send us questions and then decide so you're going to be a well-informed uh, voter. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.